Okay, so the comb yep. honey system. Yep. Now, you don't have to yes, do it that way. You can crush and strain. I happen to like natural beekeeping. I, that doesn't mean this is a treatment-free hive because our job is to take care of the bees and our job is to help them well, however they need it. If they've got mites, it's our responsibility to help them get rid of them. I try and do natural beekeeping with small bees. That means smaller cells. This is small cell, this is 4.9. Your average cell size in beekeeping is 5.4. If you give bees bigger cells, they're going to big, they're going to build bigger bees. If you leave them to their own devices, even if you have big bees, they're going to build cells whatever size they like. So I kind of like this style. I have found that this style of frame, they don't, um, they don't build wonky frames. I've never had very much comb frame in, or excuse me, a, a burr comb in this, because there's not much space for them. Now, did I tell you about the thermodynamics of this hive? No. All right, there was a, a years ago, Audi engineers developed a round engine compartment for their cars, thinking that they could build smaller cars with tighter space around the engine. But in testing, the engines overheated because the size of the round space was too thermally efficient for the engine. That's a problem for automobiles, that's a solution for hives. In this hive, the relationship between the amount of comb space and cubic inches of box space is considerably tighter than any rectangular hive out there. But there's another reason why it's thermally dynamic and better for your bees. The problem, everybody talks about ventilation and moisture. It's a big topic right now, and it, people are really, really all over it. The problem is not moisture. If the, if the humidity content of the air outside is 70%, the temperature is 90%, you can put all the fans on, and, and people are making little fans for beehives and stuff like that. It's not going to make a difference. You're going to have more air movement, but you're not gonna change the ambient temperature or the ambient humidity of the hive. The bees do that on their own. In the winter, they shiver and they heat the hive. In the summer, they flap their wings and they bring water into the hive and they evaporate it to reduce the temperature. The problem is condensation. Now in a normal flat top hive, that, kind of, that moisture goes to the top where those cool roofs make it condense and it rains down on the bees. Bees don't mind moisture in the summertime, in fact, they love it. But in the wintertime, they can't take cold and wet. They can take cold, but if you get them wet, they can't go down below 37 degrees. So, how do we mitigate that? This roof design is peaked. So when that water goes up, and some of it's gonna condense, it rolls down the inside of that hive, goes down the outside, does not rain down on the bees. This particular feeder takes two quarts. You've got to feed your bees during a dearth. If they don't have pollen and they don't have uh, nectar, they're gonna eat up their own stores. You want to leave those stores for them for the winter. They need it. You also wanna feed them protein in the winter. I'll show you over here a protein trap that's pretty cool, to, uh, to grab that pollen, part of it, and give it to, back to them in the winter. Now what I like about this top is you can pull one of those jars out. Mine are not tight like some people. They, they leave room around the outside for some air uh, filtration. But I love to be able to see the bees down in there. And, and when you get, a, you get a whiff of those bees, the, the smell of the hive is one of the prettiest things you'll ever smell. It's just wonderful. And in the winter time, you can stuff this full of straw or wool or an old blanket, an old army blanket for instance, and it acts as a quilt box. You can look that up in your bee books and stuff. It's an old technique. So this hive combines a lot of features that allows the bees to better overwinter. I have a personal opinion that the business of shipping bee packages all around the country 
we're the only country that started that. Now the UK is starting to do it. I think it's a fool's errand. I think you should teach your children to raise their own queens, and you should help yourself and the bees by overwintering. We must learn sustainability. We must go back to the old ways. The flat box, square corners, we all know bees die sometimes an inch away from their food because they won't break that cluster. They will not do it. They're coded to do that to protect their colony. Remember, they don't have a hierarchy. There's nobody in charge. They all have collective think. We can learn from them as humans. It's a good system. But it's very important to know that they are committed to their jobs. If they sting you, it's because you're a threat. Now what happens when that happens? The pheromones of the sting tell the other girls to sting you also. So if you get stung, take your fingernail, wipe it away, walk away from them. Don't let them, don't freak out. It's just a sting, but get rid of that sting so you got no pheromone. You can also smoke yourself a little bit, or some people use uh, essential oils and spray, that kind of stuff. Does this help? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, you want to see something fun? Sure. A vision for this kind of hive, and I believe that, um, well, let me just tell a quick story. There, uh, a famous painter named Picasso once said, I had an idea, and suddenly it turned into something else altogether. Well, I had this idea, and this was four years ago, and I sketched it out, and I built a prototype. Well, I've actually built five prototypes now. This is the fifth one, and these are not ready for uh, the, the field. These are uh, cabinet hardware, or excuse me, cabinet plywood, but they're illustrative of the design and how it works, and I'm happy with the joinery and the way it fits together. So the important to note is that all these frames fit in all of these types of hives. I've also got a big boy of this with two brew boxes and five boxes on top that has three of these entrances. And what that means is you can set up a two queen system with two queens down and two brew boxes and then a central entrance up top for the honey producers. And they stay, they stay very happy that way. This box folds open, there's stainless steel springs down here, or excuse me, uh, hinges down here that fold open. Come on around to the back of the hive. Pardon me. <laughs> and the back of this hive has this cute little hexagonal uh, box. Uh, and let me tell you a quick story. You know the story that uh, Necessity is the mother of invention, right? Well, I had a curveball thrown at me three weeks ago. My manufacturer, who I love, is going to manufacture these all out of exterior plywood, and he's got big CNC machines. Those are computer numerated controlled environment. And he wrote me an email three weeks ago and said he couldn't get the high parts ready in time for this show. I spent the last two and a half weeks making every one of these hives. 10 hour days, I think we cut up 30 sheets of plywood. Wow. And anybody who's made high parts knows you eat a lot of sawdust. I'm, a, I'm 67 years old. For, to, for me to spend 10 hour days for two and a half weeks straight, my legs are aching, but my heart is open. Right. So I was trying to make these entrances out of a thermal formed ABS plastic. I failed miserably. The plastic cooled too fast for me to be able to form it. This was, a, this was last Friday. We <laughs> drove here on Sunday. I spent a whole day wasted on that. And I, I don't do freak out. My, my, uh, one of my mantras is no choice, no problem. <laughs> Suck it up, get the job done. So I made these out of Cypress I had around. This one features a pollen drawer. Why do we want pollen? Well, the bees store it in the cells, and it's an important source of protein for them. You'll know that you have pollen in your hive when you see all these little Skittles-looking cells. They're all different colors. Why? 
because the flowers are different right. colors. The pollen's different colors. We want to take some of that pollen, not all of it. So we have this pollen drawer, and it's open on the end for a reason. When you harvest it, and I believe this should be a routine part of your hive management, and you can't leave it too long or it'll overfill, but you take a Tupperware container, you dump it into there, you slip it back into the, into the box. How do they gather the pollen? This little mechanism right here is one of my failed attempts to bend ABS. I couldn't get it tight enough to make this kind of corner. I could only get it to there, and I could only get the bottom of it. I can fix that, but I've decided I'm never going to make these. I'm go I, it's great for this, but it's not good for this. I like this, and I'm, al I'm always going to make this. It's more expensive, more time consuming. There's a screen, a screen bottom. Take a peek in there, all the way through. Oh, good, that's a good shot, dude. Uh, all the way through, the, the entrance hole is above the screen. What does that mean? That means the bees can't get into this pollen drawer. Now, when there's no pollen, this acts as a place for them to wipe their feet, and when they groom, the mites will drop down into this. So if you put a little bit of Vaseline in this, you can catch mites, and they won't, li they won't live. They'll get stuck. Um, so you don't necessarily have to keep this in all the time. In fact, I recommend you don't. But these holes, now remember, I run small bees. Right. These holes are just the right size to take some of the pollen, but not all of the pollen. So we, we put that in there, gently, and we put that in there. Now, I'm not going to fold this up because it's uh, open because it's a bit cumbersome and I don't have all of the stuff hooked up. These are prototypes. But inside this channel right here, there's two of these handles, one for each, uh, for each side. And these help when you fold it open. Okay. But when you fold it open, you're only lifting half the weight. That means this guy, who will be, be <laughs> big and strong later, now he can easily handle even a honey of full super. It may be 50 pounds for the average person to pick up, but it's only 25 pounds because it's folded. Right. And you're not moving that weight around, you're just folding it down. Mm -hmm. This is useful because your inspections are faster. Right. And your disruption of the bees is less because the left hand box can stay closed or even stay in place so you're not disturbing those bees. Right. When you open it up, this whole cylinder, you lift it out and move it over to work on the center box. You can work on this box, that box, or this box. The big version of this has two brood boxes on the bottom and five boxes on top. You can literally fold that whole thing out flat, which is a pretty neat deal. Yeah. Um, you can cover it with a wet piece of canvas to keep the bees calm and cool. Okay and don't disturb them, and only work the box you're working on. Now that means you can also swap frames back and forth, you got need some brood over here, you want to pull some honey, great. Let me show you the comb honey harvesting system. I'm going to be working a new because you don't have any honey production. But these frames clip together, and when you take them apart, you'll notice this is a sandwich approach, and there's a screw here. There's these little you know, Chicago screws, and these are from notebooks, if you've ever seen the notebook screw together. I've taken little parts from different industries. These are from the computer industry. Um, these are, I use these corks, they're my favorite bourbon, and I use the bourbon <laughs> corks. Uh, but what, what happens when these come apart is you end up with an individual cup full of pure comb honey. Right capped right up to the top and it is pure as pure can be and it's unfiltered it's unpasteurized and you want those enzymes and antibiotic features of the honey when you eat it you can't buy pure honey except from the good beekeeper good honey is great but a lot of honey is processed and pasteurized and filtered 
When you put this cap on there and you throw a label across it, you have a high perceived value product. You can give it away as gifts, great Christmas gifts. You can sell it at a farmer's market for $10. So, uh, and that's not the only way to, to get honey out of your hives. People ask about extracting. If you take two of these frames and you put them together, they'll fit in one of those lateral extractors. It acts as a deep. You can do it with or without these, these things being removed because the laterals have more room. They're not as, as confined as the old centrifugal ones. Or you can take them apart and, and put one at a time in a centrifugal extractor. You can also do what's called cut and strain. You just take your knife and cut the outside edges, put this back in the hive, they'll take care of it and build a new frame out of it. Then you cut that into comb pieces or you, or you crush it and strain it. So there's a lot of versatility. How did you have foundation mounted in that one that I saw? Uh, with a sandwich frame. Okay. Yeah, same same as this style. Got it. A little bit different. There's a, supposed to be a groove around it. I didn't have time to do the groove, so we just brought it and pressed it together. So where does one get one of these, or when will you be ready for well, it? Well, we're building our first production run right now, mm -hmm. and we're what we're doing. It's you know it's kind of selfish of me, but I want these hives for my apiary and I want to offset my cost to make them. So we have a manufacturer that will make these out of exterior plywood with no voids. It's custom plywood, mm -hmm. beautiful stuff. It won't delaminate the way your cabinet heart plywood will. These are all made out of cabinet plywood as prototypes to show you all. This is the first time the public has ever seen these hives. I've been working on this for four years in isolation not even shared them with any beekeepers, okay. never published pictures until recently. So the production run will be probably November-ish. We're going to try and get them in people's hands in time for Christmas. Most importantly, they'll be in their hands in time for the bee season next year. Okay. Now, we're, we're not selling these hives yet. I've never sold one or given one away. They've only been operating on our mountain farm in the remote mountains of North Carolina. We're 20 miles from the nearest town. So what we're doing is a Kickstarter campaign. And you can go online right now, and if you're a super early bird special, you can get them for $177 for a hive like this without the cupola. With the cupola is uh, 237 I think. That's the super early bird version. If you can also buy them for delivery in January or even March. You pay a little bit more the longer it gets towards bee season. Uh, we think that's a fair price. It's, it is plywood. It's, it, it's very well made and durable. And you can, we're trying to set it up so we ship them completely assembled so you just add bees. Not everybody wants to make kits. And we want to stay away from the kit business because this is so efficient. We can put the frames in it, put it in a box, and ship the whole thing. So if you spread the word for me uh, by getting early, purchasing early, it helps the cause. Uh, really, I'm doing it selfishly because I want these hives in my apiary. They're and I will use these, even though they're not perfect for that purpose, but I'll give them a good coat of paint and let the bees have them. Um, but I want to make a bunch of production hives, and so the more people that order, the easier it makes me uh, for, for our first production run.